Have you ever had anyone pass you on the highway on the shoulder? It's happened to me more than once. It's happened when I was going highway speed too, which freaked me out, which I found to be very dangerous. But most often you'll see this when traffic is backed up, whether it's an accident or construction and people, you know, just want to get to the next exit or just want to get to their turn up ahead and they end up passing on the shoulder, right? I've always found that to be very dangerous, inconsiderate, impatient, rude. The shoulders are supposed to stay open for emergency vehicles. And what happens if you come up to a point where you can't go any further down the shoulder? Well, now you're stuck on the shoulder and you're blocking the entire roadway so that any ambulances or emergency vehicles cannot get through now to get to the accident or to get anywhere, get to the hospital, wherever they're going. I find it to be very frustrating. Has this ever happened to you? It's Monday morning and we're just making our way up to the truck. No idea what's on the agenda yet, but uh, I know that uh, there's one thing on the agenda. Snow. We got a lot of it this weekend. And uh, you know what? Manitoba really pulled through. I'm kind of impressed. We got about a foot of snow. Um, maybe more in some places. But for around Steinbeck here, it's, uh, it's looking pretty good. Oh boy, she's looking kind of cold this morning. Yikes. Don't worry, we'll dust you off, get you all ready for the day. Happy Monday. Time to wake up. a little close, didn't I? Well, the sun's joining us in just a few minutes, it looks like. Maybe about 30 minutes, it'll be up in the sky. Truck's all warmed up here. I'm gonna pull it out front, dust it off a little bit, and get ready for the first assignment, whatever it may be. Well, we're not going to need this old girl today. We're going to need that one. We've got an overnight to the Paw, Manitoba. So what that means is I got to get enough stuff from here. Well, I don't need to take a lot with me. Uh, I guess I'll take my backpack. I won't need to move my GPS over there or anything because it's already got I already got my phone. I don't want to move too much over. It's just for one night. So the Paul Manitoba is about six and a half to seven hours from here. I got to go pick up a trailer there and bring it back here. However, I won't be able to get that done on my hours of service with my e-log. So I'm going to have to spend the night in the truck. I'll make it close, but not quite far enough. So instead of, you know, paying for a motel room for me, I'm going to jump in this Volvo over here, unit 3070. I'm going to get it running. I don't even gotta move any equipment over because it's a van trailer that we're gonna go pick up. Just gotta go there, hook on, pull it back here. Super easy. So, I'm gonna move forward a little bit further here. Just so I can get my stuff in there. I'm gonna get the truck started. And we'll switch it up a bit today. I've got the key right here. I don't need you today. I wish I had a sleeper on it. I've told them that it'd be nice just to have a coffin sleeper, like a 36 inch sleeper on here. This truck would be a lot more useful and I could do overnights like this in this truck. And we wouldn't have to find me a truck like this to use for the day. But that's okay. I mean, whatever. I see it's plugged in here. It wasn't plugged in before I did this. So it's, it's not that cold out right now. So it, it'll probably start just fine. But just in case, uh, wanted it plugged in. This truck looks very clean. So we're gonna keep it that way. This will be our home for today and a little bit of tomorrow. So this is what we got under the hood. Volvo, what kind of motor is it? Where does it say Volvo? Ah, uh, it'll say up there. It's facing the other way, I can't read upside down. I'm not a magician, come on. Okay, so we wanna make sure all the belts are tight. We're gonna check this engine oil.
Lots of antifreeze coolant. Fuel filter looks good. Belts all over here. Oh, I can't read it from here either. I'll have to climb up there to figure out what kind of motor this is, but it is a Volvo. What is it? Uh, oh, it says it right here. It's a Volvo D13. Volvo power. So all you Volvo fans in my comment section are gonna be thrilled, right? Driving a Volvo today. Now everybody's happy, right? Drove a Peterbilt and a Volvo in one day. Everyone's happy. Okay. Let's see if she'll start. Where's the keyhole? There we go. Come on. All right, girl. Do you like me or do you not like me? Because you don't got much of a choice. Me and you are gonna be friends, okay? Let her cycle through her things. Oh, 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 come on, come on, come on, there you go. Good girl, all right, good. It's gotta build up air pressure, it's been sitting out here for a while. Okay, I'm gonna let this truck uh, warm up a little bit and I'm gonna go get my stuff and get ready for an overnight. So I had to quickly run home, grab my overnight stuff, my pillow, my blanket, my sheet for the bed, uh, toiletry, you know, like toothbrush and stuff like that, toothpaste. Not too sure where we'll, where we'll make it to tonight yet, but I'm gonna get there, pick up the trailer, and get as far back as I can. I want to be back at our yard as early as possible tomorrow so that I can still get in my full work day tomorrow yet. We'll see. It all depends on what kind of weather situations we run into while we're on our way up there. The Paw is sort of north. To me, it's northern Manitoba, but it's not really northern Manitoba. It's sort of, uh, it's right by the Saskatchewan border and sort of uh, not even halfway up the, the province to the border with Nunavut. It's, it's not that far up there, but it's uh, Canada's a big country. Manitoba's a big province. All of our provinces are very big. So it's gonna be at least a seven hour ride just to get there. And that's not even halfway across the province. But it's kind of a, a remote drive getting there. So we don't want any problems. We wanna make sure we're prepared for everything. Got all my stuff in here. Ready to go, I'll make up my bed later once I need it. For now, we need to get going. We're gonna be bobtailing up to the Paw, Manitoba. So hopefully it's not too slippery because you don't have too much traction without a trailer. All right, we just stopped in Headingley, picked up some fuel, and we're ready for the highway now. Haven't gone on an overnight in like a year, eh? Man, that's what we, all we used to do is overnights. And you know, we'd be gone for two, three weeks at a time. And I'm a, in a little bit of a different phase of life right now, I guess. I'm really enjoying what I've been doing. But there are times, of course, when I miss the highway. And when an opportunity like this comes up where I could, uh, take an overnight in a truck like this or even a little further if they sent me like you know Calgary the other day I was gonna go to uh, Virginia actually I think I told you guys about that right and it just didn't work out the last time we came through Amaranth Manitoba here was when we uh, went to Dauphin with that big blue box the big blue trailer now oh look at that they redid their siding nice very nice Ah, the weather's a little different now. A little bit more of that white stuff on the ground. All oh, wilderness for the most part. There is a little town in here. But it's amazing how quickly Manitoba just turns to wilderness as soon as you get north of Winnipeg. Or north of that line. There's not much going on in Manitoba and that's why not many people know about Manitoba. We are the uh, the most flyover of the flyover provinces. Here's the RCMP station. And we have a lot of forest here. The weather has been very sketchy out here. Well, actually it stopped raining just now as I started talking about it, but it's been raining all the way up here. And now the sun's starting to go down, it's like four o'clock. And of course, everything's turning to ice. So it is a good thing I took up uh, this sleeper truck with me. 
I was debating in the morning whether or not my regular truck would be able to make it there and back. But we decided that I better take a, a bed with me because it'll probably be an overnight. And uh, we were right. There's no way I'll be able to make it all the way to the paw and back with this weather on my hours of service. I kind of wish they'd put that little sleeper on the other truck. Just in case, you know, for days like this and I don't got to switch trucks, we're lucky right now we have a, a spare truck. But if we didn't have a spare truck, with because there's no driver in this one, I wouldn't have been able to do this or they would have had to pay for a motel. It just makes more sense to always have a sleeper on the truck, just in case. And the truck I drive, I mean, there's plenty of space on the frame for it, right? And that was town, that was it. I don't know what the main industry up here is in Amaranth. I mean, there's probably about a thousand people by just a rough estimate. I wonder what the the, the biggest industry is like. What, what do people do for work up here? Not a lot going on. It's got to be something, right? Everybody's got pretty nice houses. Most of them. A lot of them have been redone recently. Now it's a pretty secluded roadway all the way up till uh, pretty much to Dauphin. This is Highway 50 in Manitoba. It feels good just to stretch our legs a little bit. The ride is so different in these trucks than the Peterbilt that I'm in usually now. That truck is so bumpy and so rough. I get so used to it. That's just normal to me now. I get into this truck, it's like, oh. You're just like on a boat, just floating along the highway. It's like a Cadillac. It's wonderful. So now we're on Highway 68. This is gonna take us pretty much up to Dauphin and from Dauphin, we gotta shoot up north. So we're about four and a half hours from the Paw still. It's gonna be uh, dark, obviously, by the time we get there. It's almost dark already. When's the last time I was in the Paw? Ugh, I don't even know. I don't even remember. But I do remember the last time I was there, we vlogged going through there, obviously, and one of you guys actually ended up living there. And I almost met you without even knowing it. I remember that. We almost ran into each other. I think you saw your vehicle in my video or something. I don't know. But yeah, so shout out to you guys in the paw. Swinging through your town tonight. This is Swan River, Manitoba. We're on the western edge of the province now, not too far from Saskatchewan. That sign says the Paw is that way. The Paw is spelled T-H-E, like the, space Paw, P-A-S, the Paw, Manitoba. Take the next right to stay on Manitoba 10 North. I've been here quite a few times too, throughout my driving life. So this is a straight shot north now, for the most part, into the Paw from here. It's about two to two and a half hours north. That's the co-op right there. I knew I recognized this town. I've stayed the night at that co-op more than once. There's truck parking at the back, I think. Yep, there's that wash, and then behind there, there's about five or six truck parking spots. Yeah, me and Diesel stayed there a couple of times, and there's a, like a field behind it there where uh, I let him go and run around for a while last time we were here. Good times, good times. This is fun. I'm gonna ask to do more of these. I want to do more of these. I really miss the overnights. 
I don't want to go crazy and go back to being gone weeks at a time. I, like I said earlier, I got to be home. I got responsibilities and I got appointments and everything at home and I uh, got a good position. But I really want to make myself available to do these overnights more often. I like it. Oh, okay, here's the paw. Snuck up on me a little bit. <laughs> All of a sudden, lights! I'm gonna pull into this parking lot here and uh, consult the Googles. I'm trying to figure out where my trailer is. I have an address, I just gotta figure out where that address is. I'm gonna go hook on and I might, maybe I'll come back here and sleep here. I don't know if I'm allowed to because it's a hotel parking lot, but there are other trucks here. They're just obviously using the hotel. I don't know if they let overnight truckers just park. Haven't had that problem to worry about in a while. All right, for now, just gotta figure out uh, where we're at. And then I gotta go and uh, make my bed. I'm getting kinda tired. We've been driving for a while. It's late already. It's past my bedtime. If I'm on my usual stuff. Oh, it's almost 10 o'clock. Holy. Okay, Google. Tell me where my trailer is. Where are you? The paw. You're somewhere in there. Hmm. One sec. I'll figure this out. We'll go get it. Okay. See if I can get some more light on me. Ow! Staring straight at it. Okay. Getting used to this new. Those are really bright lights. Wow, that's impressive. I really like this truck. That would be very convenient to have a sleeper behind me because I would like to do these over overnights more often. And that way I don't have to switch trucks right away, right? Takes quite a bit of effort and time to move all my equipment over from truck to truck and all my stuff from truck to truck. I'm gonna figure out which one's available. I'll worry about that tomorrow. I'll worry about it tomorrow. For now, let's go get our trailer. It's on the north end of town at a grocery store. Apparently we brought a load there and dropped it and now the trailer is empty and I'm going to go retrieve it and bring it home. This windshield is so big. So are these windows. There's so much visibility out of these trucks. I'm used to that tiny little cab. I forgot what it was like to be in one of these trucks. I feel like I'm just, you know, floating, just gliding down the road. Like I'm on a cloud. So I gotta make a left turn up ahead. That's why I'm in this lane, and I believe that's a parking lane anyways. Seems like everybody else is in this lane too. And I'd like to congratulate the paw on uh, two traffic lights. Congratulations. Way to go. I thought this was a, a blockbuster at first. <laughs> the blue uh, the blue sign there, I guess, made it look like uh, the old blockbuster stores. You guys remember those? Of course you do. Maybe the young people don't. I can still remember going to the store to rent a VHS movie cassette. Or is it not called a, a videotape, VHS? Turn right to stay on Manitoba 10 North. And you had to bring it back and they'd charge you money if you didn't bring it back on time. And you always had to rewind it before you brought it back. Be kind, rewind. Remember that? Oh wait, I want to turn right here, right? Take the next right to stay on Manitoba 10 North. And they got a McDonald's too. Wow, this is a happening place. Very proud of you guys. Okay, 500 meters. Should be here on the left. I'm gonna have to make a left turn. Oh, oh, I think I see the store over there. Now how do I get over there? Before that corner, I have to turn in here somewhere. Is it here? No. Or maybe it is around the corner. Yeah, I guess it is. I to roll down my dirty window so I can see where we're going. Is there a fancy old church there? Oh wait, nope. 
Nope, that's not it yet. Not it yet. Nope. How do I get over there? Ah, here we go. Okay. This should be where it is. Ah, there it is. <laughs> Trailer 5052 I'm supposed to pick up. There's two of ours right here. It won't be this one. It'll be the one on the other side, I think. Or I guess we'll roll around here and find out. I don't know what they're doing all the way out here, but don't worry. I'm here to save you. Or I guess not save you. I'm here to bring you back home. Okay, so 50-52. I see 50-56 here. And then what trailer number is that? 50-52. Oh, so it is that one with the new logos. I thought 50-52 was the old series with the old logos still. Because they must have changed it. Because 50-56 has the old logos on it. 50-52 has already got the new ones. Okay. Okay. Cool. Found our trailer. How am I going to get it out of there? Are you kidding me? I'm going to have to move this one first. Hot and tarnation? Why would they put them in here like this? <laughs> they must have had a reason. I'm sure there was a very good reason. Let's go take a look at this. Come with me, everybody. So I gotta grab that trailer. And there's a curb there, a curb here. I can't go that way. I'm gonna have to go around this way. I wonder if I can make it. I don't think I can. I, don't I mean, I can try. Yeah, maybe if I, if I swing it all the way out here. Gotta watch this tree here. Go all the way around. I might be able to. I bet you I could, because I could wiggle it back and forth and then point the back of the trailer back over there into that corner and then make it around. I can do this. I don't have to move this one. I can get it out. say I'm some kind of genius but I had a genius thought just now which might just make me a genius instead of going all the way around that way around there and struggling to drag it around this trailer there's nothing behind us my brain is amazing sometimes watch 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 let me enlighten you why would I drag it all the way around there? That tight corner. When there's nothing behind me. Why don't I just back up and then go out the driveway? Right? <laughs> way better idea. Man, that worked great. So they're unloading the other trailer right there right now. I guess they do that overnight and we'll probably come get that tomorrow, I'm guessing. Maybe I can come back and get that one. Cause that'll be empty by the morning probably come back and get that one maybe you got to bring them another one there's all the freight over there but uh yeah i'm just gonna do the pre-trip on this thing now i just got it out of their way now because they they needed the this trailer moved so they could get at that trailer so i just made sure everything was good backed it out just just like what, what is this like 180 feet or whatever now i'm gonna input my pre-trip into here. Sorry, I did my pre-trip over there. I got to input into the computer now to confirm that I did it. So that the government knows that this trailer has been given the green light by Trucker Josh himself. 
So if anything goes wrong with it, it is my fault, my responsibility. I made it to Swan River, but I went through quite the snowstorm to get here. Whew, I'm tired now. Oh, I'm gonna have to go clean off the back. I got tail lights, I'm pretty sure. Take my gloves with me. I found a spot here at the co-op. So I should be okay here for the night, I'm out of the way. All the parking where I wanted to park on the other side is full. And uh, I'm not blocking anything in here. Off to the side. Let's go take a look at how the back of this trailer looks. Look at this. Yikes. Oh boy, and it's windy. Fantastic. I am ready to go to bed. Oh yeah. They're not totally covered, but... Uh, I went through some snow. Here, I'll put the glove on. How about that? Let's put the right one on here. Okay. Put the right one on the right hand. That's the way this works. Okay. Just go in there again. Clear that off. Clear off the license plate. License plate light. Oh, man, I'm glad that snowstorm isn't here. Got to Swan River and it cleared right up. All right, time for me to set up the bed here and go to sleep. The weasel didn't come with me. Not my regular truck, not my truck. Didn't want to uh, just take the liberty of bringing me, though they probably wouldn't have mind. My boss often says, oh, take the dog to work every day. Can do a lot more of these uh, type of days. Even though I drove through a snowstorm today, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. I'm gonna make up this bed now and go to sleep. And we'll see you right here tomorrow morning.